Over the course of the morning, uh, you'll have the chance to hear about what these countries, how we're helping the countries to build their economies, especially in the private sector, uh, outside in the networking areas during the course of the day. But let's get our... And welcome to my good friend, Johannes Hahn, Commissioner. Now, this hard work has secured these three countries deep and comprehensive free trade areas and visa-free regimes with the EU. They're now closer to the rest of Europe than ever before. These reforms, these reforms would have been unimaginable just 10 years ago. They create huge opportunities for you and other investors. They're extremely important for the regions of the future as well, the environment. Now, the dependency on fossil fuels... A European Commission are always a kind of central, sentimental journey to come to London. <laughs> uh, but, uh, so that's why it's another good opportunity to be here and to enjoy years where we could work together, and in particular, develop also the economic and uh, um, uh, societal. And therefore, I really welcome the opportunity uh, to promote investment, the union to better leverage its impact financially and uh, of our European way of life. Thank you very much. So, uh, let's start uh, with Armenia. So, President Sarkisian, why should foreign investors enter a country that has a relatively small market, such as Armenia? Well, I'm not going to thank you for the question. <laughs> <laughs> but if I take it seriously, then why anybody has to invest in Belgium, Luxembourg, Lithuania, Estonia, Latvia, states in, in the Gulf or Singapore or Hong Kong, and so on and so forth. So I'm not thanking for the question, but I'm going to answer it. <laughs> but before I answer the question, I would like maybe of, on behalf of all of our colleagues here to thank the president of EBRD, Suma Chakrabati, for the wonderful work that he has done at, for EBRD. I know personally that it's not easy, because years and years ago, the late 1990s or early 2000, I used to be advising Presidents of EBRD. So I congratulate you and thank you on behalf of all of our colleagues for what you have done and wishing you success in your new life. And I take this opportunity because Commissioner is here as well. I mean, it's the same words. I didn't. I was not advising the European Union, but I, <laughs> but I was watching what you were doing all of these years, and I would like to again to thank on behalf of everybody for what you have done. And now to, to my five minutes, huh? <laughs> now, there are probably hundred reasons what an investor could invest in Armenia, but I will not go for the hundredth one. I will try to look for a couple of one. First of all, the size of Armenia that you referred, yes? Well, yes, three and a half billion state. But Armenia is a small state by the global nation. There are four or five times more Armenians living abroad. And a lot of them are now Armenian citizens as well. So I'm, I'm signing every month thousands and thousands of applications for getting Armenian passports. So when you think about Armenia, you should think small state, global nation. So you think about market of 15 million, not 3 million. That's one. And uh, of course, all of this, a lot of Armenians abroad, they are ready, they are, especially now after the changes in the Republic, ready to come and invest in the country. So when we think about investment in Armenia, there are Armenians local, Armenians global, and also all the others, which is several billion. Now, 
Second point, Armenian market is small, but we have signed with European Union a very comprehensive agreement. And that we are looking forward for, for the final approval of that agreement and to get closer and closer with the European Union, both in economic uh, ties and also trade and so on. But let's not forget that Armenia is also part of Eurasia Economic Union, and that's another 170 million. So Armenia can be a gate for anybody that wants in, to invest in the region. They can do via Armenia or through Armenia as well. I'm not talking about the fact that more countries now are signing with both Eurasia Economic Union and also former Soviet republics free trade agreements. So the environment is right. Third, what should I say? Third, I think you can trust Armenia. I think I'll put a little logo. You can trust Armenia. Why you can trust Armenia? Because even in the very difficult circumstances, one and a half year ago, we had a revolution. And a big revolution, a change, when completed the system. But that revolution was one of the rares on this planet when everything was happening in a proper human way. That was a revolution that was called Velvet. That was a revolution that the leaders of that revolution very quickly, in a smooth way, became the new leaders of, of the government. And I'm happy to present you uh, Deputy Prime Minister, or First Deputy Prime Minister, Tigran Avinian. And that's a country where even the president, your humble servant, had to walk the street, go into the middle of a demonstration of two, three hundred thousand people without being afraid, without bodyguards. So you can trust Armenia. In our country, with our nation, we can do even the biggest changes smoothly. Well, uh, the other one, you can trust your money with Armenia. Go back a thousand years, in the, if you take our region, the, the, the Middle East, Armenians were famous as traders, jewelry makers, and you ask even then and now, they will say you can trust the Armenian in the Middle East. So I'm saying you can trust your money with the Armenia as a state, you can trust your money with our Armenia as a financial center. You can trust your money with Armenian banking sector. This is one of the rare ones that is representing international banking sector. So we have big European multinational banks, HSBC, Credit Agricole, the regional banks, Greek banks, Iranian banks, Russian banks, you name it. So it has a very stable, Armenia is rich, it's a small country, but rich with natural resources, copper, gold, fantastic Arad Valley with, with uh, agricultural potential. It's also rich. It is also rich with a unique, unique commodity, which is called water. Nature is producing around 8 billion cubic meters of water. Armenia is using, is using only one. So you can share it. We can share it with our neighbors. That's a unique thing. So it's a small but quite a rich country. It doesn't have oil or gas, but it has a lot of other minerals as well. Uh, Armenia is also rich with human resources because it was known under Soviet Union as a place where academia, <coughs> research, development were very strong. And it's not only because it was a tradition and education matters in Armenia, but it's also in the culture of the nation, every family. You look at the 10, 12 million Armenian diaspora everywhere they, they were, from Argentina to New York to Lebanon and to Calcutta, the first thing they were making was the church and the second thing was a school. Armenia is a place that they teach playing chess from the second grade of the school. So I think the next one will be probably investment. Yeah. I think you can invest in Armenia and with every investor you'll get a partner in Armenia. Investing in Armenia is also fun because Yerevan has, is becoming a fantastic place for entertainment. No, I, I am not joking. It's, it's true. And then I would say that Armenia now is a young nation. And the young, not only by the, the, the number of the young citizens, but by spirit. By the number of startups in the country. And the final one, this makes it what? Nine or ten? The final one, Armenia, is focused to the future. And that is why, alongside with our natural resources industries, we are focusing on new technology, artificial intelligence, mathematical modeling, big data management. Even the president has his initiative. 
because the president is also a specialist of mathematical model. So I invite you to Armenia. Small state, global nation, you can trust Armenia with your money and investment in Armenia is fun. Pretty good messages. And we are young and we look at the future. Let's, let's leave the caucus for, the caucuses for a moment and move to Eastern Europe. Prime Minister Rumas. Thank you for this question. First of all, I have to say that it's difficult for me to, to, to talk after such excellent uh, speakers. And I have, to, I have just to, to say that uh, we all agreed that there were so many things in common, both historically, culturally, but also, uh, also on economic attractiveness. So I think we all together probably will be much more together, will be much more attractive than each of us individually. I think this is one thing that I'm trying to promote. And I, starting with uh, your neighborhood, I think I would love to see joint projects that we do together with Georgia and uh, supported by European Union and by, by EBRD. Now, and of course, Armenia, as well as, as, as all of our colleagues, can be proud of many things, including to be young government. I think it would be also proud that uh, it's a country that's also a cradle not only one bite, but Armenian brandy. <laughs> Whoever who doesn't know what is Armenian brandy, I'm amazed, but then I'm inviting everybody to come and try it. What is Armenian brandy? Sir Winston Churchill, the leader of this country, loved it. And uh, then, uh, of course, uh, economic growth. We are a young nation, as I said, and as a young nation, we're not happy that we're having economic growth around 7%. We want more. We are ambitious in Armenia. Now, I think what is wrong? As, as for me, uh, as not as a government, but as the President of the Republic, I would like, there are huge changes in, happening in Armenia. And I'm proud that we're changing the society to much more democratic, open, huge uh, civil society, which was the core of the changes in Armenia. The moment you rele release the tensions in the society, you create an environment which will be risk-free. This world is becoming much more unpredictable, difficult. I think the more you make your country democratic, with a strong civil society, with the freedoms of economic growth, then they will. So, well, what is that I personally are, would like to see more, is the speed of changes to be faster. We are fighting, for example, corruption, and I would say, like our goal is that there is no corruption, but there is, it's not possible. Corruption is not a disease that you can have a, in some cases yeah, you need an operation, in some cases you need a medical thing, but it's a condition. I think the most important thing in corruption is your immunity towards corruption. <laughs> and I have the feeling that in my nation we are gradually getting to not fighting the corruption, but creating a society that has immunity towards corruption. I think people that are rejecting both the corrupt policeman up to the corrupt high-level official. And this is that I would like to say this would be the most thing that I, I would like the faster growth, faster change, because the time is not waiting for us. The world is moving very fast. In order to be a leader, and I would like to Armenia to do something like quantum flow. I think in a sense that instead of developing only the IT technology, tomorrow is not IT, tomorrow is artificial intelligence. So our focus, when I'm thinking about focus, is to focus on IT technology. If I'm speaking about fighting corruption, i creating the immunity for corruption. If I'm, thinking I'm, I'm speaking about economic growth, then I'm speaking about more than 7% or higher. So fast world, fast changes, fast decisions, but a long, long time way of keeping your country immune from global risks. And there's only one way, no corruption, democracy, civil society, open place, open for everybody for investment, and be friendly with everybody.
and based on European values. And it's about predictability too. It's very important for us, uh, of course, to speak about some changes, like some limits for capital movement and so on and so forth. The second, of course, we are going to build level playing field. Rule of law is very important for our country. Mr. President, what is the message you would like to leave us with? Well, I think you've summarized it, but I'll try again myself. So, whenever you think about Armenia, not necessarily you think about the Armenian brandy or wine. I think it's important, important that you think about high quality, ecologically clean agricultural and food processing. You think about much bigger market than small Armenia market to the north, the market to the east, to Central Asia and to Europe, and of course also market to, to the south, to the Gulf, which we are developing. I just came here from my official visit to Qatar, we're developing it vigorously. I would like to think about Armenia with the potential of doubling, tripling, quadrupling its tourism and real estate development. And I would like to leave a message with you that I'm here also to, uh, to remember when you think about cooperation. As I was saying previously, Armenia is a member of both the Eurasia Economic Union and also very close to European Union, close to Russia, and close to Middle East and to Central Asia. So from some point of view, because there was an invitation from Georgia for next year, let me extend another invitation for the year after, but maybe we can <laughs> Not the same, not the same. The year after with an idea, because there's one institution, there's one country that, that has very close relations between Europe and Eurasia, which is Armenia, and with the North and with the South. And the second, because of the huge history of European Bank being with a mandate we're working there. I'm inviting maybe to the year after to have another meeting with EBRD, but also focus, focusing on possible cooperation between European Union and Eurasia Economic Union as well. In another conference in Armenia the year after. And the last one that I would like to leave that my last word that this is a very ambitious not only state but the nation, very young very energetic and basically focusing on the real future. And with these words, I would like to invite colleagues here, investors, to come next year to several conferences in Armenia. One of them will be the famous Summit of Minds, which is a Chamonix conference, will be in Armenia. And the theme will be artificial intelligence, governance, economic governance, and geopolitics and we will have top-class international people uh, being present. I would like to also invite you to come. Next year we'll be hosting a big conference on doing business with China. we are around 300 Chinese companies coming to Armenia. And the last thing, as I told before, doing our business in Armenia is also fun. <laughs> so, I'm inviting you to come, everybody, in September, October to Armenia, then we'll have the sixth famous Starmus festival and this festival will be it's a it's a festival of technology science music arts and business and the, six, the fifth one was in Zurich with 6,000 people participating with all the moonwalker astronauts from America and uh, 12 uh, Nobel Prize winners and so on the sixth one will be in Armenia and will be devoted to the Apollo Soyuz flight with the cosmonauts, astronauts, businessmen, musicians, I hope we will have the same as last year, and Hans Zimmer, Brian May, Peter Gabriel, and any you name. So come to Armenia. Next year. We'll be hearing from private investors about the opportunities and challenges in the countries. So all that is coming up, and uh, obviously we'd like you back in here by 11.40 for that.